Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425 if you wish to be on the program. Uh, we got to get back to and talk about the economy. Uh, this is Matt Egan. He is on CNN. This was another brutal week for the American economy. Stocks are down, inflation and borrowing costs are up. And all this is causing real economic anxiety for families. The good news is that the jobs market is still pretty strong. Historically low unemployment, layoffs are relatively uncommon, though they are picking up a bit. The bad news is even the White House concedes that the jobs market needs to slow down to get inflation under control. Inflation is so high that the Federal Reserve is resorting to the most aggressive interest rate hike since 1994. Now, the goal is to slow the economy just enough that prices chill out, but not so much that it causes a recession. And that's not going to be easy. In the meantime, borrowing costs are surging, especially in the housing market. Mortgage rates are spiking at the fastest pace since 1987. The average 30-year fixed rate mortgage is now 5.8%. That's almost twice as high as a year ago. And this will price some people out of the housing market. The higher mortgage rates go, the less home you can afford. Business leaders and investors are getting nervous. A new survey from the conference board found that 60% of global CEOs and executives expect a recession by the end of next year. And 15% say we're already in a recession. We will find out if we're in a recession with growth numbers. A recession has a very particular definition. A recession's definition is two quarters, two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. And last quarter, I believe we did show decline. Uh, so if we're showing decline again, we're definitely in a recession by the technical definition. Now, uh, that would be uh, not good again for this White House because they very insistently insist that there's no recession on the horizon. Just like they did with inflation, they say it's not necessarily the case, and their credibility is really shot on this issue. Nobody really believes them. I, I want to spend a moment just on the home pricing issue. I, I, I heard a story actually last night um, on people trying to decide, given the market, uh, should they... Uh, take some risk and try to sell their home now and, and maybe wind up homeless and having to, to find an apartment in order to do so. This is uh, following up on, on Matt Egan's report here from Market Watch. Millions more home buyers may be priced out of the housing market as 30-year mortgage rates spike. Eric Finnegan, director at John Burns Real Estate Consulting, wrote on Twitter that mortgage rates rising from 3% at the start of the year to 6% effectively rules out 18 million households from qualifying for a $400,000 mortgage. To translate that to the prospects of would-be homeowners, on a $400,000 loan, a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at a 3% interest rate would cost home buyers $1,686 a month, excluding taxes and fees. That equates to $607,110 in total. Compare that with the current environment at 6%. That same mortgage would cost $2,398 a month or $863,353 in total, a 42% increase in overall monthly repayments on the lowest rate. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 5.78% for the week ending June 16th, up 55 basis points from the previous week. That's the biggest one-week increase since 1987. The old maxim, desperate times call for desperate measures, appears to have come into play with the latest rate moves, says Mark Hamrick, a senior economic analyst at bankrate.com. Uh, who said this in response to the Fed's 75 basis point hike last week. The cost of borrowing is becoming more expensive, particularly for those with variable rate products. 
we are in uncharted territory for a lot of people. We haven't seen inflation like this. I mean, since I was born in the mid-70s, we haven't seen inflation like this. Now, a lot of people are saying, and this is from CNBC, that uh, the housing market has cooled off, but that doesn't mean we're going to be in a housing bubble like we were in 2007, 2008. I'm not so sure. And when the experts start saying this, it makes me a little worried. They do have some points, though, um, that uh, the the typical credit score, FICO credit score for a home buyer today is 751. It was 699 in 2010, two years after the financial sector's meltdown. Lenders also have more uh, strict guidelines about lending that reflect credit quality. Home prices have soared as well. Uh, this gives homeowners record amounts of home equity unless the home values collapse. Uh, at the same time, leverage, which is how much debt the homeowner has against the home values, has fallen. Total mortgage debt in the United States is now less than 43% of current home values, the lowest on record. Negative equity, which is what a borrower owns, owes more on the loan than the house is worth, is virtually non-existent. Compare that to the more than one in four borrowers underwater in 2011. Just 2.5% of borrowers have less than 10% equity in their homes. All of this provides a huge cushion. So it's got to get really bad for things to collapse. But it could happen. I am noticing uh, in, in areas where I follow houses, not that I'm in a position to buy, but I can wish, can I? I can spend fictitious money in my head that maybe one day I'll have. Um, I'm starting to see more and more houses come up for sale all of a sudden. Uh, and and they're not as expensive immediately as they were just six months ago. People seem to be more reasonable in their expectations now. But there's definitely something going on out there in the housing market. There definitely is a slowdown. And I, I would tell you this in talking to friends of mine in, in banking and in, in real estate, that if you've got one of those houses and it's it's a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, you're not gonna have to worry. If you've got a house that's uh, for sale for less than $200,000. We're talking the three-bedroom, two-bathrooms uh, the, that were built in the, the 50s and 60s that you're in. You, you've got it fixed up, but they're older houses. They're kind of small. Um, they're less than $200,000. You're going to be able to sell your house. It's the people in the four, five, and $600,000 range, the McMansions and, and the like, that are going to have some serious problems right now. They're going to have harder time finding buyers because the buyer who could afford a $400,000 house three weeks ago no longer can. That's how dramatically things have changed is so quickly. But we're also in this period of stagflation. Stagflation is where you've got uh, the markets aren't doing much. Inflation is high. Interest rates are high. The economy is just not growing. You know, it, we presume all of us who in our 40s and younger just presume the stock market just goes up and up and up and up and up and up. A uh, quick fact for you I learned over the weekend in the Wall Street Journal. From 1966 to 1982, the stock market barely moved. Now, pay attention to this. This kind of blew my mind. If you invested $19,000 in the stock market in 1966, how much money, if you just left it alone, you bought $19,000 worth of stock in 1966, and you left it in the stock market until 1982 and sold it, how much money would you have? The answer, $18,500. From 1966 to 1982, you'd have lost $500 on a $19,000 investment. That was mind-blowing because you think you're going to get, I mean, at least a couple of percentage points every year. Uh, the strategy in times of stagflation is to buy stocks that pay dividends, not stocks that are growth stocks. Because stocks that pay dividends over time, you're, you may, you'll be making money. And the more stock you own, the bigger your dividend. You buy more stock, you reinvest it, your portfolio continues to grow that way without uh, having to be in growth stocks. Growth stocks and stagflation aren't going to grow. Now, again, I'm not an investment advisor. I am not an economist. But I know how to read the people who are. 
And there's a lot of discouraging news for people who are investors, particularly those on the verge of retirement who are seeing the stock market uh, go upside down all of a sudden. It's not a good situation for people. And this is why Joe Biden and the Democrats are having problems, no matter how much they blame other people. Here's Larry Summers, the Obama Treasury Secretary, Bill Clinton's economic advisor. He was the one Democrat to loudly and forcefully say inflation is coming, Democrats. Don't spend all this money. And they chose to attack him, vilify him and ignore him. I think all the presidents point uh, towards a recession, a recession, Chuck. There's always a first time for everything. And I don't want ever to make uh, forecasts with uh, certainty. But if you look at a whole range of indicators, if you look at what's happened in markets, if you look at the relative levels of interest rates of different durations, if you look at surveys of consumer uh, expectations, and if you look at the simple fact that what drives inflation is supply and demand, supply doesn't change that fast. And so mostly what you need to do to reduce inflation is reduce demand. And that Oh, is a very hard process to control, and so it usually leads to a recession. Usually leads to recession. Now, here's here's the fascinating thing that I like uh, that that I I really like hearing Democrats do this because it's a it's a tip off to those of us who are in politics that they know what's coming. That they're trying damage control at this point. And I, I, you got to hear this. This is, first of all, from Jim Clyburn, the number three in the House of Representatives. He's the guy but for whom Joe Biden wouldn't be president. South Carolina Democrat. Listen to this. Is the country headed toward a recession? How do you think the economy is doing? Well, none of us are pleased uh, with the e economy. Uh, we know what a deep hole uh, that we were in. Yes, you know, I chair the coronavirus uh, subcommittee, uh, and I know uh, how uh, flawed uh, our health care system uh, was in trying to get uh, the, the virus under control. I know how inept the previous administration was when it came to getting uh, out in front of this virus. We got ourselves into a deep hole, and in order to get out of that hole, we had to ratchet up spending. We put money in the economy. We tried to keep businesses open, try to keep uh, people with income in their pockets. And whenever you do that, you run the risk of inflating things. And what you then have to do is try to find uh, some balance in all of that. Blaming Trump. See, blaming Trump. Here's John Harwood, uh, Biden's mouthpiece on CNN. Yes, in terms of this particular economic problem, uh, look, uh, it, it is fair to say that uh, Joe Biden's fiscal policy at the beginning of the administration uh, uh, may have exacerbated the problem of inflation. It did not create the problem of inflation. There are many factors that went into that, uh, including supply, supply shocks from the pandemic, uh, loose monetary policy from the Federal Reserve, the war in Ukraine, all of that. The economy springing back to life from the pandemic, that in itself uh, made demand surge and the uh, government put a lot of money in people's pockets. So uh, that's a legitimate criticism. On the other hand, uh, the Federal Reserve is the steward of monetary policy. That's the most important way of controlling inflation. And Joe Biden, as the face of the American government, gets asked every single day, what's your strategy on inflation? What's your message on inflation? There aren't too many good answers for that, and the president has to come up with some answers. And we're going to be dealing with this all the way through the election because inflation is going to be with us through then. Uh, but the idea that a, any president of the United States, for example, can just make gas prices go down is kind of ridiculous. Ha, he could. George W. Bush did when he was president just by announcing they were going to expand gas exploration. But man, they are in full damage control mode at this point. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do. It's Donald Trump's fault. Um, here's the problem. This is a very real problem. And, and I need all of you to really, really understand this one for me. Joe Biden and Janet Yellen, his press, his, his press secretary, his treasury secretary, Joe Biden and Janet Yellen, his secretary of treasury, both said inflation was transitory. And then it turned out that it was not transitory, and they were, oops, my bad. 
Joe Biden and his Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, are now saying no signs we're going to have a recession when 60% of global businesses believe we are either in or about to be in a recession. Larry Summers, the man who warned them about inflation, says a recession is coming. If Larry Summers and corporate America are right two times in a row and Joe Biden as Treasury Secretary have doubled down twice and denied what was coming, it destroys their entire economic credibility. And that's coming. A recession is coming. And with it comes the complete destruction of their credibility. Not that they really have any right now, but the last remaining shreds of it are out the window. When you deny inflation and it comes, then you say it's not going to be that bad, and it is. Then you blame Putin when it started before he did anything. And then you say, well, we're not going to get a recession, and it comes. You have no ground to stand on for anyone. No one will believe you on anything. I'm a longtime customer of Bull & Branch. I love their sheets. I sleep very comfortably, very coolly underneath them. I don't like to get hot when I sleep. They're very, very breathable. They're very, very soft, and they get softer with every wash as well. Bolin brand sheets, they're not just buttery, breathably, and possibly comfortable and softer with every wash. You don't even have to worry about the thread count there because they use the best threads possible, and you can tell by the quality of the sheets. I highly recommend you get some. My wife and I, you know, she heard the ads on other shows. She doesn't listen to my podcast, and she wanted them, and then we got some, and we've fallen in love with them. We've got them on a lot of the beds in our house. They use the highest quality threads on earth for superior softness and a better night's sleep. They're so luxurious. They're beloved by three American presidents, and they got over 10,000 reviews, all of which are fantastic reviews. And right now, you can get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use the promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolinBranch.com. That's BolinBranch. Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com. The promo code is Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Let me go to the phones. Tammy, you're going to be up first. Welcome. Hey, Eric. How are you? Good. How are you? I am doing great. I was dying to call you today because I wanted you to know that after you talked about your onion rings, and I'm a connoisseur of onion rings. I love cheddars, but I made yours Friday and they were the best dang onion rings I have ever had in my life. <laughs> well, I hope you didn't lose your thumb in the process. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I ate so many onion rings that the chili I made for chili dogs. I never ate a hot dog. I was so full. <laughs> <laughs> That's but terrific. Let me tell you the one thing that I did a little bit different. I don't know if it made a difference, but I couldn't remember what my mother had taught me about the difference between all purpose and self rising uh -huh. flour. And I had self rising, so I used that. And then after I made them, I looked it up, and the difference is the self rising already had the baking soda and powder in it. Yeah. But I still put the extra that you had put in your recipe. Uh -huh. And I think that it fluffed them up any even more, but they wound up having the best crunchy um, mm -hmm. coating that I have ever had and the best flavor. And it made so many, just two of the Vidalia onions, and it was like this huge pile. So I reheated them the next day for lunch because I ate them for like three meals um, in the air fryer, which crisped them right back up, and they were delicious you know, redone. That's and I fantastic. Like, I have got well, to tell him he is not joking. They are the best. I, look, I appreciate it tremendously. I, as a testimony, I really do. Uh, yeah, the baking powder is the secret. It, it definitely makes them crispier. Um, and, and you can use the self-rising. Um, it, it definitely works. It's got a little salt in it as well. Um, look, I got to let you go there, but Tammy, I appreciate it. If you guys want that recipe, you heard Tammy, you text recipe to 33777. Just follow that link. You'll see the onion ring recipe. You can subscribe as well. There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing. And I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, more importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, you can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to 
to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, you can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, They've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it. And I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC. Member FINRA SIPC. Hello there. Yes, you can join in if you like. 877-973-7425. I'm going to go back to the phones. I'm going to go to Tracy. Welcome to the program. How are you? Hey, Eric. Doing great. I'm the mom that sent you a photo of the baby formula yes, on the shelf yes, to the Mexico yes. City stores this weekend. And, I mean, you can get any brand. All the U.S. brands are there. Shelves are full. Our relatives who live in Mexico City are scratching their heads about not understanding why we have a shortage. So I was wondering if you could speak to how come it's not a problem there. And then I just want to do a a PSA to all the moms out there. Get on a flight, if you can, to Mexico City. Go shopping. Bring home your formula. Yeah, okay. So I'm glad you raised that issue, Tracy, because there actually are a couple of issues, uh, one of which I don't think most people know. And first of all, actually, I got to say, Tracy, thank you for sending me that picture the other day because I I never even thought about – I I know like in Europe they're not having this problem, but with the Western Hemisphere, it never even dawned on me. Uh, And then after you sent me that picture, a friend who lives in Ottawa sent me a picture of there. They're not having the problem either. It's, It's a problem unique to us. Um, which should frustrate the mess out of everybody. Uh, But the reason we have the problem and no one else does is because the FDA does not allow the importation of European baby formula. Why? This one will crack you up. It'll make you mad too. Uh, The FDA does not allow the importation of European baby formula because European baby formula has a stricter formulation that limits additives and preservatives to the formula. American baby formula has a longer shelf life than European baby formula. And uh, listen, I realize there are those of you who are organic, uh, into organic stuff and, and all natural and the like, but American baby formula, it doesn't cause all sorts of problems because it has those preservatives in it. It lasts longer and tends to be cheaper than European formula. Uh, as a result, but you can't get it right now. And I don't know if you heard the the Abbott uh, plant shut down again with more problems. So we're having this problem. Mexico and Canada, not only do they have domestic facilities that that make uh, formula for them, but they also allow the importation of European formula. The result is they don't have shortages. Now, Tracy's son was at the beach. Um, I want to say, if I remember her email right, was on a mission trip at the beach and was in a store and saw the baby formula and just a a huge aisle of baby formula. In this country, a number of states are no longer seeing shortages. They've been able to catch up. They've been able to, to boost production. But Abbott makes some of the more common baby formulas and they've shut back down again. And so... People are having the problems. Very frustrating. It really is. I am, I'm, you know, my wife and I, we had to use, for it's kind of absurd, by the way, that there's this sentiment on the left about uh, just breastfeed. Why aren't you breastfeeding? It's better for your child anyway. Uh, my wife had a double mastectomy. She couldn't breastfeed. And the number of people, I mean, I, I remember when, um, we had kids and I mean, we had to, we, we had to do formula and the people, I mean, even they were like, I just, I can't, why, well, I want you, well, we couldn't physically impossible and people just can be very judgy. I related to this in a big way. There's some audio making the waves of, um, Van Jones on CNN. Now I, I, 
I want you to know, Van and I don't agree on a host of issues, but he is a very, very nice guy. Um, you know, he was the the guy had made a lot of remarks sympathetic to communism and the like, got hired by the Obama administration, was pushed out as being too radical. And I was at CNN at the time, and, and I had gone after him for a lot of the stuff he had said. And I got to know him, and it's always remarkable to me when you get to know someone, you realize they're not actually the boogeyman you think they are. He is a terrifically nice person wonderful father and also he's kind of had an awakening about just how far off the deep end white progressives have gone in this country and he's not afraid to make his own side mad with a number of his statements uh that that rock the boat he doesn't he's no longer typecast as the, the, the progressive voice on CNN, he's very Democrat, he's very sympathetic to Biden, loves Barack Obama, but he's willing to call out his own side. And I don't know about y'all, but I personally, as someone who does this with my own side, I kind of appreciate the people who are intellectually honest enough to call out their own side and say, you guys are being nuts. And boy, did he go to town on CNN. I mean, a party of the very high and the very low. Uh, but if you could pull out the working class, you've got people who are very well-educated and very well-off. Those people talk funny. Latinx, I've never met a Latinx. I've never met a BIPOC. I've never met, you know, all this, this weird stuff that these highly educated people say is bizarre. Nobody talks that way at the barber shop, the nail salon, uh, the, 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 uh, the grocery store, uh, the community center. But that's how we talk now. So that's weird. And then the people who are very low down on the economic ladder need a bunch of stuff. You wind up over-promising, oh, we're going to give you reparations to, to people at the bottom of the economic ladder talking weird to appeal to people at the top of the ladder, and the working class walks away from you. That is the danger we're facing. It is. The Democrats have lost touch. There's a story out about the ongoing protests outside Supreme Court justices' homes. This is from Fox News. Pro-choice protesters congregated outside Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett's Virginia House on Saturday, dressed in clothing, appearing to be soaked in blood, and holding baby doll toys. Abortion on demand and without apology, signs held by members of the group Rise Up for Abortion Rights read on Saturday as they stood outside Barrett's home in Falls Church. The protesters were armed with baby doll props and were wearing pants, appearing to be soaked in blood to show a future of forced abortions or forced births if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. Protests erupted outside of conservative Supreme Court justices' homes in recent weeks following the leaked Supreme Court draft opinion signaling the nation's highest court might overturn Roe v. Wade. Your neighbor says, post row, we say hell no, protesters shouted outside of Barrett's home. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the handmaiden has got to go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the handmaiden has got to go. Yes, back to the kitchen where all of you should be. <laughs> wow. You know, it's against the law to protest outside a federal judge's home uh, in an effort to persuade the justice on an opinion. And yet Merrick Garland is refusing to prosecute. Y'all remember that when they make demands on Republicans to take action. Y'all y'all remember that the Democrats, it, it's, it's just convenience for them. No intellectual honesty there. Let me get back to Van Jones's clip. Van Jones says that uh, the the white Democrats who are in charge, the, the highly educated, uh, overwhelmingly wealthy Democrats, they are incapable at this moment of relating. They talk in funny ways. They do. They talk in, in deeply funny ways. They say things that no one really understands. They use phrases that no one can relate to, like Latinx, Latinx, whatever they want to say. And I, I saw one today where, where the federal government is using your tax dollars to push the word women with an X instead of an E, W-O-M-X-N, which has been pushed for a while, and yet here we are again with something that, that no normal person wants 
where X kind of becomes the letter that is substituted for everything. And they think that stuff matters while people are hungry. They think that stuff matters while people are losing their shirts in the stock market. They think that stuff matters in ways that do not matter. And that, frankly, is the biggest issue here. The white upper-income Democrats matter and care deeply about things that don't matter to anyone else. They care deeply about things culturally that turn off other people. I'm going to be very honest with you with, with where, I, and I was telling friends of mine this this morning, and, and some of them disagree with me. Republicans are in a unique moment right now because suburban soccer moms can put up with a lot and will let a lot go. They're not deeply as hostile to transgender uh, issues as a lot of conservatives are. They're not deeply as hostile to uh, gay rights and pride issues as a lot of Republicans are, but they're willing to lash out on all of that stuff as long as their 401k sucks. And they're mad about cultural issues, but they're mad about cultural issues because they have license to be mad about those cultural issues because of economic issues. If the economy's fine, they'll put up with all that stuff and they might even embrace it. But right now, they're so mad about all of it. Republicans have a unique opportunity to push a little bit further on these issues. And they can do so as well because Hispanic voters and an increasing number of young black men are really put off by this nonsense. Hispanic voters, young black men, and a whole lot of non-college educated white people are the three groups that do not believe boys can become girls. And while the economy is bad and the country is turning on the on the Democrats, the Republicans, the conservatives, if they don't screw it up, they've got a, a unique moment to change the country on this stuff, to take advantage of people's angst. One of the ways that they're doing this, one of the ways they can do this, is by talking about these cultural issues in a way that relates to people and humanizes the tragedy of these situations in a way Democrats have for years highlighted people who have sympathetic cases, who are are made to feel oppressed by bigotry of the GOP or some such, bigotry of Christian conservatives. But right now on these particular cultural issues, the Democrats have overplayed their hand, and most notably, they don't realize they've overplayed their hand. That is perhaps distinctly the most important part here. They don't realize just how badly they've overplayed their hands. And there's a voter backlash coming. The reason the voter backlash comes, though, is because in overplaying their hands on all this stuff, the Democrats have been tone deaf to the real needs of the American people. They've told us there was no inflation when there's inflation. They've told us there's no recession coming when a recession is coming. They screwed up the economy so bad it makes people realize that culturally they're screwing other stuff up. We have a unique moment in this country to be able to change things as conservatives with the voters going along with us. So that when times get good again, we've dealt with these things. Because when times get good and the economy is roaring, people don't want to fight on these things. You and I may. They don't. And we need to recognize the moment we're in. The Democrats are overplaying their hands on abortion. They are promising riots in the streets. And the riots in the streets are only going to help the GOP. When they start burning down churches and pregnancy centers, that's going to help the GOP. And they think It will turn people to them. And frankly, some of them, they're so emotional on this issue of abortion, they don't really care. They just want to do harm to the people they believe are harming them. They really fundamentally believe a right has been taken away from them when the majority of them will live in states or do currently live in states where abortion on demand until birth is already the norm. But they don't care. They don't understand. They don't recognize. And there will be hell to pay for them at the ballot box. And we have a moment small moment in time where we can capitalize on the issue and pursue an agenda that connects us culturally to Hispanic voters and to blue collar voters and to some degree build a new coalition around cultural issues that connects as well to economic issues because 
white, college-educated, rich people are too out to lunch on any of this stuff these days. One of the other issues that we got to talk about as well is what to do if it stinks in your house. Let's just say, hypothetically, a lot of you, I can see you texting about my onion ring recipe. You, like me, don't have an exhaust vent in your kitchen. You can get the Eden Pure Thunderstorm, and it'll eliminate the odors in your kitchen. In fact, it wipes out the odors. It doesn't mask them. It eliminates them. I use it in my kitchen when I fry because we don't have an exhaust vent. I took it with me to Louisiana. Thankfully, my rental car was fine, as was the hotel room, so I didn't have to use it. But I keep my Eden Pure Thunderstorm with me in my in my suitcase because it eliminates odors. I've been in a rental car that stunk before. It had really spooky odors. Uh, or at One time, a hotel had pet odors. It was able to eliminate them. You can get three of them right now for less than $200. An unbelievable deal, particularly with the cost of everything else going up. This one won't disappoint you. You go to EdenPureDeals.com and you put in my discount code ERIC3 on the front of the site. EdenPureDeals.com. Discount code is ERIC3. You get three Eden Pure Thunderstorms. Now, normally they each cost about 100 some odd dollars. You can get three of them now for less than $200. Unbelievable savings. You're actually saving $200. You're getting them for less than $200 and you get free shipping. What you do is go to EdenPureDeals.com. You put in on the front page of the site the discount code ERIC3, E-R-I-C-K-3. It'll take you to the Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack. You put it in your cart, and away you go. Unbelievable deal. Great product. This hour is brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. Wherever you are nationwide, they can help your business grow. Reach out to them, firstlibertyga.com. Big deals for people who want to be businesses that want to be big deals. Firstlibertyga.com. Tell them I sent you. Now, let's see. I want to go to Jeremy. You're going to be up next, Jeremy. Welcome. Hey, Eric. How are you doing today? Good. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. Quick question for you, and it's I think it's almost like a cyclical question because it's something that always comes up every single midterm. And I remember the same conversations and listening to the same pundits back in 2014. We keep hearing the term historical, historical losses, unbelievable losses, you know, for either party. Can you define what historical losses looks like? And at the same time, if we happen to see those historical losses for the Democrats, Do you think they will stop and reassess where did they go wrong and maybe change? I know in the past they have not done that. Oh, that's uh, that's an excellent question. Um, Yeah, let let me do this for you, Jeremy. Uh, Historic losses mean the Democrats in 2010 lost about 60 seats. They're probably not going to lose 60 seats this time just because of redistricting. Uh, but down to the state and local level, people forget about those. You could see just this massive Republican wave where even really terrible Republican candidates who are even terrible on the campaign trail get swept into office because people vote for the letter next to their name, not for them. That's what Democrats are worried about. Now, will Democrats change course? They kind of can't. And that's kind of why it doesn't matter what I say. They are predisposed to a way of governance that in order to change their ways, they would have to reject. And if they change their ways in order to um, in order to win the election, there would be a progressive backlash that would split the party. It is actually better for the Democrats to lose than for them to change their direction right now and risk an inter-party warfare like we've never seen the Democrats have. Uh, And look, they know what's coming. They know what's coming. They believe internally that what they're doing is the right way to govern. They understand that the headwinds are against them. They really do privately understand that. But they don't want to. They don't want to change course. They don't want to set different precedents. They don't want to do any of the stuff that they should do in order to mitigate the damage. It's just absolutely um, they're destroying themselves with the public to save themselves as a party is what's going on at this point. Um, it's but man, it's fascinating to watch them. So many of them privately know what's coming. You talk to them, they know. They just can't change, and they're not going to change, and they know what would happen if they did change. It would be all-out war. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo, and we lost track of time. 
No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.